we're talking about, I had the new one stand up. Why? We want to talk about how we're learning from people. There's a lot of people in this room that stood up for a whole long time. There's things that we've learned how to do right, and there's things that we've learned how to do wrong. How many people in this room have made a mistake? Show of hands. Thank you. How many made it twice? Thank you. Notice I didn't take my hand down. See, it never ceases to amaze me when I do strategic planning sessions for major corporations. I don't do generic ones. I call them up and I say, you know, let me see your foobar list. Or what? You're fouled up beyond all repair list. <laughs> it's amazing how many companies don't have one. And so if, if I was starting a company and I was hiring people, I mean, uh, let's see, your name, sir, is? Doug sir? Doug. Doug. We hired Doug. So what do I do? I go get the foobar list. I walk up to Doug and say, Doug, I'd like you to read this list. We've already made these mistakes. We don't need you to make them bubble. We'd like you to go make some new ones. <laughs> It's amazing how many people don't have that list. For you new ones out there, go to the people that have been there doing this and start asking those questions. If we're going to be the number one district in the United States, we've got to share that information. Let's don't make the same mistakes over and over and over again. Example, I'm out of the country doing a program for people that manage large skyscrapers, big old tall buildings. We're down in Cancun. I got about 250 executives. And I said, somebody give me a foobar. The guy raises his hand. He said, I got this 100-story building in downtown New York. I said, all right. He said, we bought these new containers and we mismarked them. He said, one night we filled the soap dispensers in every restroom with white latex paint. <laughs> I said, you gotta be kidding me. He said, no. I mean, in defense of the person that made the mistake, white soap, white paint, it looked about the same. But get a visual the next morning. <laughs> People are down in the restroom in a 100 story building going, this is some serious soap. I mean, can you get it off? I can't get it off my hands, you know? He said, my phone rang off the hook. I said, is anybody get anything worse than that? Guy instantly raised his hand. He says, that's nothing. <laughs> 250 executives went, that's nothing? He said, my people clean the toilet seat tops with phosphoric acid. <laughs> he says, you don't want to go there. <laughs> we put rashes in very bad places. I mean, you start thinking about sharing the information and getting an understanding of what we're talking about here today. Fubars, ladies and gentlemen. First time hurts, but it's a learning I experience. in my time. One of them worked for me, and we made a major mistake. We're getting ready to lose a customer. And Gail says, Rob, I'm going to go visit this customer. And I said, we are? She says, yeah, do you want to come? I said, yeah, I own the company. Let's go. So what do we do? I need a chair. Hang on one second. You got to see this. Excuse me. If I kill myself, I'll sue. We go, we go to drive to the customer. Gail does what? She says, Rob, pull into that grocery, I mean that hardware store. I said, why? She said, just bear with me. We go in, she says, sir, do you sell hemp ropes? Yeah. She said, I need 10 feet. I said, Gail, what are we doing here? She said, just go with me here, boss. We get 10 feet of hemp rope. She said, sir, do you know how to make a hangman's noose? Yeah. She makes a hang, the guy makes a hangman's noose. I said, Gail, what are you doing? She says, don't worry about that. We drive to the client. We walk into the front. The receptionist said, I can't believe you showed up. You don't need any reason. Just go on back. They'll kill you when you get there. We walk into the president's office. Gail doesn't say a word. She grabs a chair. She puts it in the middle of the floor. She stands in the chair. She takes the rope. She throws it overhead. She pulls it up. And she says, kick the chair. <laughs> he said, what? She says, kick the chair. I deserve to die. I'm standing in the back of the office going, far out. Not only does he think we won't do business with us, now he thinks we're stupid, okay? And Gail's sitting there, and the magic starts to happen. She says, kick the chair. And the guy says, no, Gail, it wasn't that bad. She says, oh, yes, it was. Kick the chair. He said, no, Gail, it wasn't that bad. And then she said the words. She said, well, then what should we do? And he started explaining. When we walked in there, folks, we didn't have a customer. When we walked out, not only did we have a customer, we had a customer that explained what? That explained what we needed to do to get better. Sometimes, folks, when we make a mistake, the best thing that you could ever do is say what? I blew it. I blew it. But guess what? Let me tell you how fast we're going to fix it. And all of a sudden, the client says, gosh, yellow blew it. But boy, did they fix it fast. Your customer understands mistakes. And guess what, folks? They make them. So do we. But it's how we fix them that counts. We now have an opportunity to do what? Take it to the next level. And that's what I'm trying to identify to you. Take it to the next level. Admit the mistake and then fix it. Listen to what they've got to say. And Appreciation for it, folks. We've got to understand how to do it right and wrong. Share the information. Now, we're also going to have a little competition today. I'm going to cut it right down the middle. Everybody on this side, you're the uh-huh crowd. When I point to you, you're going to say uh-huh and raise the roof. Let's see you do it. Uh -huh. Let's 
not bad. You guys are the That's Right crowd, and you're in competition with the Uh Huh crowd. Let's see if you can beat them. talking about folks when you start looking at how we're playing this game it's tough to when you folks do uh, yes, and are we done oh no we got to deal with what standardized testing discipline issues not enough time uh, yes, are we done oh no we got more we got to deal with tough demanding parents uh, yes, are we done no we even have more than that we got to what heavy workloads interruptions demand on time other balancing work and personal life Done? Heck no, we got more. We got the P's. Poor pay, portables, paperwork, pack, pecking orders, and politics. <laughs> now I'm going to teach you a three letter word Y E P. Yep. Want everybody in the room to say it? Yeah. Okay. Do you still have to deal with difficult students? Yeah. Are we done? Do you wish your associates would act a little bit more professional? Yeah. <laughs> Do you sometimes feel like the little dog when you're dealing with your superiors? Ready? Five. Stand back up. Stand back up. Give them a round of applause. Oh, we got somebody else. Up, Bob? No, no, no. You can pick it up. Oh, 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 oh no. Oh, it's only one left. Okay. I got it. Bob, you didn't know their answers. I want to know your answers.